everyone. Welcome to the video on the introduction to nuclear chemistry. Um, so far in the semester, we have only talked about chemical reactions that involve the electrons. Okay, and so um, most of your general chemistries as well as even organic chemistry, that's what it focuses on. Um, but this is still a very limited um, view of chemistry because there are times where the nucleus is involved. So the nucleus, hence the word nuclear chemistry, where the nucleus is involved in the reaction. And, the, and especially for those of you that are going into health and, and medicine or in nursing, um, these types of reactions can be very useful. Um, of course, they have their um, drawbacks and can also be dangerous. Um, but they are can be very useful in medicine and so we're going to hopefully see that through this um, series of videos but what's involved is an isotope so just a reminder of what isotopes are um, remember that all of our elements have an atomic number <clears throat> and this is the number that does not change for unless you change from one element to another and this is the identity of an element and it's the number of protons our mass number, so this six on carbon, okay, this is the atomic number, okay, and you'd find that on the periodic table, and then the 12 is the mass number, and that's the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So if mass number is protons plus neutrons, and we know protons is six, then we know that we have six protons, and we would have six neutrons because 12 minus 6 equals 6. Right? And so for this particular isotope, we would have 6 neutrons and 6 protons. Okay, if we had carbon 13, so let's pretend this was a 13 there, then we would have 6 protons because that doesn't change, same element. Okay? Um, but if we had a 13 there, then we would have 7 neutrons. Okay, so isotopes are atoms of the same element that have a different number of neutrons. And so that's right here, just what I just showed. Okay, and so here if we had carbon-14, then if you count it in there, we would have eight neutrons and six protons. But all the way across, an isotope has to have the same number, has to be the same element symbol, and it has the same number of protons. The only difference is the number of neutrons. <clears throat> what we haven't discussed are radioactive isotopes. Um, isotopes can be radioactive, meaning that they are unstable and they will spontaneously emit energy to form a more stable nucleus. Okay, So radioactivity, that's what this is, is the nuclear radiation that's emitted by a radioactive isotope. Okay? And so um, of the known isotopes, 264 are stable. Okay, so they are um, not radioactive, and 300 are naturally occurring but unstable. Okay, and so there's an even larger number of radioactive isotopes that can be artificially made in the laboratory as well. So there's research going on to, to do this. Um, and these radioactive isotopes, um, these, as we go on and look at these in more detail, um, they are going to emit a certain type of radiation, okay? And so that's what's going on here. These isotopes, they will spontaneously emit energy, okay, in the form of some type of radiation, okay? And so there's different types of radiation that can be emitted from a radioactive isotope. There are alpha particles, beta particles, positrons, and gamma radiation. Okay, so when this radioactive isotope, we know what an isotope is, okay, and there are 300 plus that are spontaneously radioactive, and so they break down or they will emit energy, okay, and how they emit this energy is in the form of certain particles that you see here, okay. If an isotope, radioactive isotope, emits an alpha particle, okay, this is a high energy particle that has two protons and two neutrons. And so it actually looks 
there's two symbols for it, alpha and the helium element there. Okay, if you look at helium, it can have a mass number of four and uh, its atomic number is two. And so um, it's also represented as writing out the symbol for helium. Okay, and so this is an alpha particle which can be emitted from a radioactive isotope. Okay, a beta particle <clears throat> is a high energy electron. So it looks like an electron. Okay, it has a negative one charge. We know electrons have a negative one charge. And it has a negligible mass, just like an electron. Okay, so if we look at its symbol, there's our beta, and then it can also be written like this. So it was zero mass, negative one charge, and E for electron. Okay, and these can be formed, we'll look at this more later, but it can be formed when a neutron converts to a proton plus an electron. A positron is an antiparticle of the beta particle, so it's opposite. So positron means we're going to have a positive charge. The charge is opposite, but their masses are the same, so effectively zero. So a positron has a plus one charge. <clears throat> it's called a positive electron. So everything looks, here's your beta plus, even though it's a positron, okay? But then here, the only difference is, is we have a plus one instead of a negative one. Okay, a positron is, think of it as a positive opposite anti of an electron. Okay, and it's formed in the opposite way. So we can take a proton and convert it to a neutron and a positron. <clears throat> Gamma rays are the most high energy penetrating rays um, because they have no mass or no charge. Therefore, they can move very fast and they can penetrate um, very deeply. Um, and they are, once again, they're, re they're released from a radioactive nucleus and they have no mass and no charge. So they're given the symbol of this gamma. Okay, so here's a nice summary. So I would suggest, you know, go through these, write these down, get used to these. But here's the symbols. So here's our alpha, the charge and the mass. There's our symbols, charge and mass of what we just went through. And so we notice here that gamma has zero charge, zero mass. All right. And if you keep watching these videos, we're going to look at the actual decay process and look at the reaction and um, start to explain these particles more. Thank you.